welcome to my channel. Today, I thought I'd do something a little different and do a very practical, quick tutorial on how to paint a birch tree. So I just sort of pulled something out of my archives and my, I have a whole room full of canvases in various stages of finish. And I'm just gonna use that as a background just for fun, just to demo how I paint birch trees. Now, I've painted birch trees lots of times. And back in the olden days, I used to just sort of do the thing that you would expect. You'd paint a white trunk, then you'd sort of try and detail the black, funky things that happen with the birch tree. Um, and maybe put some gray shadows and you'd be really, you know, working quite a while to make it look really cool. And I always thought that was like kind of more difficult than it should really be. So I've tried various types of ways of doing that. Then I tried painting a white and then using a palette knife and putting black on top. But what I found with that is though it worked, the danger of it was you get way too much black and then you end up with a tree that's really black and what you want with a birch tree in my mind is to have more white than black and just the black as the accents and so the danger of doing the black on top of white was to kind of getting it too black and too dark so i decided what if i painted a black tree trunk which seems a little weird but i paint the trunk black i just use a knife with some gray for mid-tones and then on one side mostly and then I add the white on the very, at the very end. And it literally takes no time at all. And it looks really cool. And it's very textured, which I like because birch bark is very textury. So it is realistic. So let's try it. So at this point, I'm going to use a one inch flat brush and pure black paint, which I have to find. I'm going to take my one inch brush. I'm going to get it load it up really good with the black, get the brush loaded, kind of like we like to be sometimes. Well, not very often. All right, so this is kind of scary if you've never done it, and if you haven't painted a lot, you're like, oh, I can put like pure black, but you will. You're just going to like find a place that you want to put a tree trunk. I'm gonna make this one fairly big, just more for demo purposes, but you don't have to make him quite this fat. Sometimes when the edges are fuzzy, like if you see the fuzzy edges, that's because the paint is a little bit dry, or just not as fluid. So if you add a little water, you see how much more defined the edges become with a little more water added to the paint, which I did fairly quickly. Then you just have to work that paint in. To the yeah, get dry again. I just stick my brush in my water. And then you, you, it's a much easier to get a nice smooth edge. And I'm going to put some white on my palette and mix some mid-tone gray. Not too bright, not too light, not too dark. I'm just using a palette knife to do that. Black's more aggressive, so I'm going to use mostly white and just a little bit of black. Mix it together. Looking for a mid gray. That's pretty close. Now, if I was, if this was actually a painting and I liked the background, which I really don't, um, I would put a little bit of the background color, in this case, probably green or blue or turquoisey, in the gray. Just because in nature, black and white just by itself mixed together doesn't really happen. So I usually, I would call that a dead gray. So in to make the gray more lively, it's good to put the background colors in to just tie things together. I mean, I could do that now, but I don't have all my paint handy, the, those colors, so I'm not gonna bother. This is just a demo. So now we're gonna start with the palette knife. Now, I'm gonna assume you've never used one, so I'm gonna go really slow, a palette knife, I want one with an elbow like that. I like the point because it, I get more precision to where I'm putting things and I can use just the end when I want. It's just a personal preference. So what you do with a palette knife is if you hold it like this, like a fork, you're gonna put the, the part of it that's furthest from your face on the bottom, you're gonna smush it into the paint and pull towards yourself. 
so that you've got paint on the bottom and especially on the furthest edge of there. Now, in the case of a birch tree, it's a rounded object. So if I just did this, it would look cool, but it wouldn't have the vibe of the roundedness. So in order to make it rounded, hopefully you can still see this well, I'm going to do it sideways. So when I pull this down, I'm going to pull it in a sort of a C shape. And I'm going to go right on the edge of, the, and I'm going to do that. Like so. And I'm going to do that over the entire trunk, but I'm not going to try and cover all the black. That's not the point. And the other major, major thing is don't push too hard. If you push hard, I will show you, you just get more of look, it looks a little bit more like a brush puts it on. It just kind of blends it in, which is okay too. And I mean, if you wanted that sort of just rounded sort of effect, you could do that. The more you stroke with that knife, the more it blends together. But that's not the look I like. I like the, what I call inconsistent or, I don't know what the word is, organic look, random, inconsistent, all those things. When my kids were teenagers, random was like a word that everybody used. It was funky. So I like it to be random. Now, again, you're not covering up all the black. You're letting the randomness of using a knife, which you can't control as well, by the way, as you can a brush. And you're using that to your advantage when you're creating this tree. Depending on the pressure, some areas will end up different than others. And by the way, at the very end of this, you can put more black back on. If you end up taking more of the black off than you want, so good. I went all over the edge, but that's the big thing is to get used to controlling the knife so that you don't go off the edges so much. And you can go the other way as well. Um, I find it easier to pull a knife downwards. So you can always, don't forget, you can move your canvas in any orientation. So if you want a little gray on this side, you can do that from here too. It's just a little easier than trying to pull upwards from the other side of the knife. So you get used to using the knife. So that's what we've got so far. Really pretty. Lots of cool happening. I'm going to wipe off the gray on my knife. So I have some pure white. And again, if I was trying to make it look cool in the background, I might incorporate some of those colors in the white as well and do like three or four different colors. You can do as many as you want. But for the purposes of demoing, I'm just going to now do white. Again, I'm going to do this because it makes it easier. I'm gonna try and come a little closer to the camera, hopefully so you can see me. So you're gonna make contact and very gently and randomly put areas of that white bark. I'm gonna make sure I get all the way to the bottom of the canvas a little bit. And I just get so excited. I just love the way this looks. It's just so cool. I mean, when you get better at this, you can work at things like where do you want more of the focus of the viewer to be and maybe do more distinct whites and dramatic blacks in that area. But for this demo, I'm just going to kind of show you the basic technique. And you can, the lighter you touch, the, the thicker the application of paint will be that is left on your tree. But in general, that's the technique. And now, like I said before, you can use add more black, but I'm actually gonna think I'm first before I do that, I might add a little more white. I want like a few areas that have a ton of white. So I'm kind of picking this area just to have lots of distinct white, just because I want to. I don't know what. And again, if you want to get really fussy, you can pick one side of the tree that have in shadow. I didn't really worry too much about that today. For purposes of demo, that's just fine, good enough. 
So now that I've got those really bright whites and I want more texture, I can take black and make some really dramatic. And the interesting thing about adding the black back in at the end is that if you push a little harder, you can it mixes with the other colors and creates interesting patterns as well. Because the first black we did was very thin application of paint. It's not as dramatic, but you'll notice this thick paint just has such a presence on the canvas. It just loves the canvas. I made the edge, I changed the edge there, so I just smoothed it out a little bit. Man, I, I, that would need to have a brush to fix, but you get the drift. A really interesting sort of almost, I don't know, magical kind of birch tree is happening here. It's really cool. I like it. And I like when there's dramatic areas of just black, dramatic areas of white. To me, my eye goes right to this area. But you can have fun. You can take, once this dries, you can take a brush and you can create some literal more um, on purpose kinds of knots and different things. And of course, everybody knows when you see a birch tree, I would take my liner brush, make some nice wet black, and you can make like little branches that come off the side, like little black branches. And I usually make them come out of a black area, like so, just to make it a little more. There we go, a little more real. Make them kind of wiggly. I'm not trying hard to make it really perfect. I don't like perfect realism. I like kind of the funkiness of doing my own thing. And you can make like a kind of a knot where that comes out of too, if you want. Yeah. It's just by creating some rounded head things under that. But that, that's the basic gist. So there you have it. I still don't love the background, but Birch Tree 101. Hope you enjoyed this short, quick, sweet tutorial. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below. And please comment, interact. I love to hear from you. And getting more engagement is always a fun thing. So please do that. Um, peace and love. See you next time.